So in this video we're going to look at 3D scanning of ours. So we're just going to start a new session. In the start menu we can then choose smart, small part guided workflow. Click next. So the small part guided workflow is new to the Ghost Skin Spark, just released with VX Elements 9. Then we can choose the resolution we want to use and, and a new thing called Smart Resolution. And we can acquire the texture and remove any isolated patches. So the next step is it will ask you to um, calibrate the scanner. So we can open up the uh, box and in the bottom of the box we're going to find some oh, like calibration plate. And then we can just measure that 10 points up. One to the right, left, the front, and the back. And it's now being calibrated. Press OK. And then we're going to go next. And it's just going to give you some tips on how to click the targets on, let's say, a turntable or a table. And we can click the targets by just tapping the button on the side of the scanner, scan all the targets on the table, and it will automatically create a clipping plane. Click create clipping plane to finalize. And it will launch you straight into a scan. <clears throat> So I'm just setting up the view a little bit better. Good. And then we can just tap the side of the button and it will now start to scan. If you can want to zoom in, there's controls on the side of the Ghost Skin Spark that you can use to zoom in. Um, so what you can see there is a little bit of hybrid of this yellow color. So that's the new Smart Res. So right there it's showing you that it's captured the data but if you want to be able to flick between, you know, the the, the highest resolution that you could, um, then you would want to make sure that you collect all that yellow information and make sure it's all all just normal colors. Also, the Ghost Skin Spark has 99 white lines, um, which you can see the lines there. And why they're green? It's green at the moment is that we're at the right distance away. So if you're too close to the scan or the part, it will become this like red color. And if it's too far away, it will be a blue uh, color. We can turn off the automatic shutter in case you just want to really focus on the darker surfaces of this vase. And it's, those black areas are actually shiny as well on the real world object. So you just need to go at it from different angles and eventually it will, it will capture that. So it's great to have like an automatic shutter to be able to focus on yeah different colors like it might be just dark colors that you're interested in scanning or just light colors so that's why sometimes we turn off the automatic shutter so we can stop the scan and have a have a look at what we've got looks like it's done a pretty good job we can then select what we want to keep and then we can invert the selection and then delete what we don't want to keep. Then we can hit next in the workflow and that will create a brand new scan. And we can then turn the part over and scan the other side. Now we just tap the button again to get started and just start working your way around again. So turntable is a great idea for small parts in particular where you can just spin them around. Just makes it life a little bit easier. And so now we're just going through and making sure we've collected all the bottom side of it. And it's the same process again, you just want to go in and out over it. It's just like 3D spray, it's just like spray painting really. And we've actually got those yellow indicators to know 
if we've captured enough or scanned or spray painted enough. So it's just a very useful workflow. So you can see there's no targets on the part itself um, because we can either track by color, geometry, um, or targets as well. So now we can uh, align the two scans together. But this is potentially going to be a bit of a tricky alignment because there is not really much common geometry like it all looks very symmetrical so what i need to do is just figure out you know where the same common points are so fortunately there are some bits that aren't very uniform like over here that's quite a, th a thin little strip so i'm going to put a target there and there um, and then i can put another point over there so you're just matching a few common points. It doesn't need to be many. Um, like three is usually fine. Sometimes you might just want to put a, a couple more in. And I'm just double checking that I've got the right rib. Yep. And then I can say that I only want it to transition about 0.5 of a mil before I best fit. So it doesn't just spin around and maybe align to the wrong direction. And now it has aligned really well. Now what's interesting when we update the scan and, and merge it to it's now just one scan again and we can actually still increase and decrease the resolution if we wanted to but now with the new smart res we don't really need to. We've got high enough resolution in the detailed areas that we need and now what I'm doing is just maybe auto decimating um, the areas that you know are flat um, I can use the auto hole fill function to just capture or fill any little holes that may have been there. And I've got a reduced noise filter on, and that's even before kind of like finalizing the scan. So a lot of the post process work post processing work is just no longer an issue with Creaform scanners and software. And so far it's only been seven. Uh, almost eight minutes um, and you can see we've we've done a lot of work to 3d model this it would it would take a lot of time to get the textures right and everything like that so this will be the output is a obj file ready for use in, in CAD or if you wanted to 3d print this you could do that so it's great for um, you know, heritage and preservation work or just digital media, sharing um, a 3D object with somebody. Uh, now we can export the mesh as the OBJ file, like I said. And then after we export the OBJ, we can save it as a just a Creoform session file. And the Creoform session file holds or keeps all of the raw data within the file. And that enables us to go back to the session file and increase, decrease the resolution, um, change other settings. So it's just a good idea to keep the session file and then export the mesh. So you can see, just checking my time, it's been nine minutes so far. So it's a very, very quick, quick process to collect data with Creaform scanners and software. And with the new smart res, it's really eliminated the need to scan more than once because you can scan at high res and low res at the same time. And we have our finished object completely finished. So thank you very much for watching and um, I hope you enjoy the video.